Welcome to my channel. My name is Nurse Pauline RN. The goal of my channel is to assist students to be successful in their fundamentals of nursing exam. Today we are going to be doing vital signs. And I'm starting today with my temperatures. Before you go into a patient's room, make sure you check to see if your patients are on isolations. If the patients are on isolation, you'll put on your gowns before you go into the room. You clean your equipment before you use them on the patients. They have disposable blood pressure cups in the rooms. Um, ask them their name. We do the two identifiers. Let them know what you're going to do. Make sure they're comfortable. Make sure they are pain-free. Okay, so the first thing we do, we will wash our hands and we put on our isolation gowns if we need to. First, we'll talk about our temporal thermometer. This thermometer we use across our forehead down to the hairline behind the ear. The tympanic thermometer is left in the air one to three seconds until you hear a beep. That's your tympanic thermometer. If your patients are having a seizures, never place anything in the patient's mouth. No thermometers, please. Axillary temps are one degree lower than the oral temp. Tympanic and rectal thermometers, these are your core temperatures. This is one degree higher than your oral thermometer. When patients are doing a rectal examination, this patient goes in the knee chest position. Normal temp is 97.5 Fahrenheit, 36.4 centigrade. For oral temp, you place it under the tongue with good supply in the sublingual pocket of the mouth one to three minutes. That's for your oral temp. For rectal thermometers, we do not place them in the rectum for patients who is on chemotherapy, patients who have heart problem, this decreases the vagal nerves for patients with heart problem. They will experience bradycardia if you insert that rectal thermometer in their rectum. We do not place it for patients with hemorrhoids, diarrhea, fecal impaction. Usually the elderly will have lower body temperature, maybe 97, so try to keep them warm. They are usually cold. The most comfortable way to deliver oxygen is by your nasal cannula. Be aware of patients who want respiratory isolations. Wear your mask if there are any respiratory isolations in the rooms. Most accurate temperatures are your core temperatures, your tympanic membrane. Your tympanic thermometers, that's your core temp and your rectal thermometers. A fever is called pyrexia. It's greater than 101 degrees Fahrenheit. Assess these patients for temperature going up to 103 becomes symptomatic. Risk for sepsis. Septic patients, their temperature is elevated, their heart rate goes up, their respiration goes up, their blood pressure goes down. This is a med call. Be careful. Communicate with your doctor. High temperatures, patients symptomatic, they will be shivering. For your tympanic thermometers, you place it in your eardrum. You leave it in there one to three seconds until it beeps. Some patients may be at home 
maybe in some hospitals or nursing home they may still be using those oral thermometers with the mercury if this is the case in order to get an accurate reading of the temperature they should hold it up at eye level mm -hmm. Patients who are mouth breather, we should not give them oral thermometers. These patients who have nasal packing, they should not get oral thermometers. I did say for rectal thermometers, no rectal surgeries. When we talk about heat conduction, I've seen this on exams, is transferred of heat from one substance to a cold substance. An example of this is like a patient has a fever and you place a cold towel on the forehead and that transference of heat from the patient's body to the cool towel decreases the patient's temperature. This is conduction and is usually on the exam. The rectal thermometers, if we are using them at home or maybe in the nursing home these days, the rectal thermometers, they have a red tip and the oral thermometers, they have a blue tip. For thermometers, we have heat-sensitive tape stickers which adheres to the forehead and to the abdomen. When you use um, thermometers, some patients have their own thermometers at the bedside or if you're moving from one room to the other, we use probes, you dispose of them before you leave the room. Our heat regulation center, our thermoregulatory center is in the hypothalamus. That's a test question. The registered nurse takes the first vital signs on the patients coming up. Not the tech, not the LPN. The registered nurse takes the first vital signs. The registered nurse should know the doctors change the first dressings for surgical incisions. The nurses can reinforce, but the doctor is the one who takes, does the first incision dressing change. For your blood pressure, the blood of the cuff should be over two-thirds of the circumference of the upper arm. Each patient has their own cuffs into the room. You dispose of it after discharge prevents infection, nasochromal infection. A potential is less than 90 systolics caused by hydration, decreased fluids in the elderly, Try to hydrate them, prevent UTI, urinary tract infection. Let the doctor know if your patients are hypotensive. Make sure they're on IV fluids. Pulse pressure is the difference between systolic and diastolic pressure. 120 over 80, your pulse pressure is going to be 40. And that's a test question. In the hospital, we have blood pressure cuffs, size small, medium, large, and extra large. No blood pressure cuffs for patient with central lines. We don't do blood pressure on that arm. Patients with dialysis catheter, AV graft, we don't do blood pressure in that arm. No blood pressure for arms with fractures. Patient with mastectomy, we don't do blood pressure in that arm. Patient with lymphedema due to 
mastectomy we do not do blood pressure in that arm we don't do blood pressure in continuous IV fluids in that arm we don't do blood pressure in the arms with patients with blood clots if for some reason we are unable to take blood pressure in both arms we can take it in the thighs or in the calves to take a blood pressure manually, you explain to the patient what you're going to do. You have your clean equipment, you check the patient's ID band, you ask the patients what's your usual blood pressure. If the patient says, I'm usually 120 over 80, you'll inflate your blood pressure cuffs 30 more that will be 150 or 160 you will place the blood pressure cuffs around the arm you'll locate the artery you will inflate the cuff and up to 150 160 when there's no sound of the pulse that's your systolic you very very slowly deflate the cuff the next sound is your diastolic blood pressure. You make the patient comfortable, ask them, is there anything I can do before you leave? Orthostatic blood pressure is a drop in blood pressure occurring during changes from a supine to a standing position. This patient is having dismay or they are unsteady you have to assess them for falls they are at risk for falls prehypertension is 120 to 139 over 80 to 90 stage 1 blood pressure is 130 to 139 80 to 89 diastolic when a patient gets to 180 over 120, that's a crisis. Hypertension is diagnosed on three visits to your doctor. For patients' temperatures, we encourage your patients to use incentive parameter, COPD asthma patients, <clears throat> especially your patients who are coming back from surgery who has not gotten up out of bed as yet, even when they get out of bed, you encourage them to use the incentive spirometer. They need to deep breathe 10 times on the hour. They're supposed to blow into that machine. Prevents lung expansion. Ask your post-op patients to walk. If your post-op patients are not walking, they're at risk for blood clots in their legs, thrombophobitis, redness, swelling, pain in their legs. Some patients are on respiratory isolation. Don't forget to keep their doors closed. Sometimes in the hospital, the doctor will order cooling blankets for patients with very high temperatures. Hyperventilation means deep, rapid breathing. Their oxygen in the body is low and their CO2 is high. The patient with hyperventilation will, it's a test question, we will, We will ask them to use a brown paper bag to assist them with breathing. Kusma rep respiration is deep, rapid, labored breathing, especially in patients with ketoacidosis. Dysmia means shortness of breath, cyanosis. Cyanosis is blueness of the skin caused by lack of oxygen. Please check their pulse oxygen, their H and H, make sure the H and H is okay. Communicate with the doctor. P 
patients with CPAP, sleep apnea, they use the CPAP machine coming from home. We ask them to bring their CPAP from home. They are experiencing problems with sleeping. They have sleep apnea while breathing, while mm -hmm. sleeping, sleep apnea while sleeping. Ask them to bring their CPAP from home. Pulse ox machines are usually in the rooms at the bedside, especially those post op patients. Make sure you are checking their pulse ox machine, their oxygen, respiration normal 12 to 20 breath. Respiration can either be labored or unlabored. Patients who are having um difficulty breathing symptomatic call the meds team please shine strokes respiration is deep shallow breathing filled with periods of apnea tachapnea is abnormal breathing greater than 20 cycles a minute tachapnea brinapnea is abnormal slow breathing less than 12 cycles a minute Strider is a crowing sound on inspiration caused by obstruction. Um, wheezing is whistling sound of forced air. Forced just like patients in as with asthma or COPD. They love wheezing. They do inhalers or nap treatment. If these patients are symptomatic, We'll call the meds team for these patients. ABG is ordered by the physician. It's done by our respiratory therapies. ABG stands for arterial blood gas, measuring the amount of arterial gases. The blood is drawn from the radial artery by the respiratory therapies. When patient has fever, you notice increased respirations. For receptive patients, fever, increased respiration, increased pulse, increased temperature, decreased blood pressure. Patient symptomatic, call the meds team. Patients with sepsis, they're shivering. Maybe they need cooling blankets, antipyretics, antibiotics. Blood cultures, they are symptomatic, call the med team, notify the doctor. After you use thermometers, if it's just a personal one at the bedside, you clean it from the stem to the bulb. Always clean thermometers with water. The lowest temp is at the axilla, which is one degree lower than the oral temp. Remember, when you have an unconscious patient sidelined for oral care, remember Maslow IQ of needs oxygen is first. For stethoscope, the low pitch sounds will use the bell part of the stethoscope to assess low pitch noises. The diaphragm of the stethoscope is used for high pitch noises. When you're checking your radial pulse, you use two fingers lightly. You count for 30 seconds and then you multiply by two. You can check the respirations in the meantime. Keep your fingers at the pulses and for the additional 30 seconds, you can be assessing the patient's respirations without the patient's knowledge, which is the most accurate way to do the respirations without the patient's knowledge. If the patient has irregular pulse, you will check for one full minute. For infant CPR, we're using the brachial artery. For the angle CPA, CAB, carotid pulse. Patient, we'll do this five to 10 seconds. 
the correct site to verify pulse reading is by checking the apex of the heart. For pulses, zero is absent pulse. You call the code for one plus pulse that's weak, two plus pulse that's normal, three plus pulse that's full pulse, slightly increased, four plus pulse that's bounding pulse is elevated in volume. If patients have anxiety, decrease their anxieties, high, patients may be dehydrated, their pulses are elevated, patients may have elevated pulse after physical therapy or exercises. Okay, that's all we have today, but don't forget your Apex is located at the fifth intercostal space on the mid cavacular line. Please hit your like button. Please hit your subscribe button. Please share my video. Please keep on studying and I'll see you in my next video. Keep safe. Love you all. Take care. Thank you. God bless.